this lesson uh, has been uh, marketed and advertised as simplifying, how to simplify a painting. And um, I, for, for me, the, the real aim of, of this next couple of hours is that I would very much like to think that uh, many of you will be able to um, think about what we have done in this session uh, the next time you set off on the adventure, which is a painting. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you one or two uh, suggestions and ideas that I've been thinking about it in how to simplify. Um, and, uh, and, and if, uh, apart from the picture of the Bonjour Café uh, that we're going to do, if some of uh, what we talk about today um, hangs in there and the next time you, you are attempting to simplify something, you, you pick up some of the strands of what we've said today, that would be really good. That'd be fantastic. Um, I, it was just a couple of days ago, I, I can't remember why, but, but the Thomason Edison, Thomas Edison quote, you know, he, he who some people think didn't invent the electric light bulb, but many people do believe invented the electric light bulb, uh, is reputed to have said that he believed that genius was 1% innovation and 99% perspiration. Um, uh, so I've been thinking about this um, the last couple of days or so, and, and it, 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 it's kind of relevant to what we're doing today because I don't think it's just genius that, that fits that particular uh, mathematical equation. Um, I, I think um, it's true of many human activities, especially creative ones, um, and in our case, the creative activity of, of making a painting, that 1% um, uh, is innovation or inspiration, and 99% is perspiration. See, having a, an idea, uh, a great idea or seeing a wonderful view um, often is that inspirational bit you know is that one percent um, actually working towards making a painting of it, it tends to be the 99 percent um, so um, I, I think my my point here is that in simplifying is not simple okay and so um, I've got a couple of things that, uh, two, two points particularly that I just want to uh, raise that might be of some help. And um, the, the first is, and, and possibly I think this in some ways is the most important, is, is getting your, uh, your head around this, a mindset, if you like. The, the, the mindset particularly that, when you're setting out to make a painting of your idea or a scene or a view, um, you, you don't necessarily need to just record it. In fact, if you are able to react to the inspiration um, and, and not necessarily feel that you're going to record it, in other words, if, if you don't think that you've got to put everything in, but you can leave some things out. That that mindset is is a I think a really good thing to have before you set off to simplify things. So I want to show you the work, just a couple of pictures of the work of a couple of artists. So I think I I think I've shown these ones before. The first the first is um, and I have done this before. I know is uh, by um, uh, illustrations. Um, paintings by Paul Hogarth, uh, uh, an English artist who died some years ago, one of whom I was particularly keen on when I was doing my time at art school. And, um, and, and the, I'm showing you these to um, make the point that Paul Hogarth has, uh, uh, in simplifying what he sees before him, he has reacted to the scene rather than recorded it. Um, uh, and, and in this one uh, 
on a, a Greek island, uh, he, he has reacted to certain elements. Now, these will be subjective, of course. Uh, each and every one of us will, will have different things that we will react to. Uh, but you can get a very strong idea of what he's found interesting here, uh, the, the blue dome, uh, and, and then these little figures down here. And he's made a feature of the whiteness of the building, sort of going into the whiteness of, of the paper. Um, I, I just, a couple of others that are, to, to make this point. Yeah, let's look at this one. Uh, not, not this picture, but this little, um, this little illustration to the side. Uh, th this is somewhere in uh, Sicily. And uh, you can imagine that when he was sitting here drawing this, uh, th there would have been visual stimulus uh, all around him, uh, uh, buildings, noise, uh, um, uh, people, and so forth. But, but he has reacted to this by simplifying it down to uh, what is going to be the next point I'm going to make. He's focused on certain elements that he found for himself important. So he's, he's just brought in uh, the monument here, uh, a couple of these palm trees and, and this bench of, of um, old folks sitting watching it. And uh, let's just have a look at another one. This is a, uh, a, a bazaar in Istanbul. Um, and I'm sure many of you have been to this or other types of bazaars, they are enormously visually stimulating. And uh, he, he's uh, uh, just focused in on certain things that interest him. It's really interesting how he, he, he up at the top here, he's just put these four windows up here and left everything else out and, uh, and left an, an awful lot else out. Let me just get one more picture and see. If we, um, yeah, th this is this is, um, yeah, uh, th this one here. This this is uh, somewhere along along the same lines. This is, um, I think, it's in um, Marrakesh or somewhere like that. And uh, you can, you again, you can see uh, Hogarth has what he has been interested in, what he has decided to focus on, and importantly, what you can't see is what he's left out. Um, but that, that's the tricky bit, what you leave out. Okay, and there's one other picture I'd like to show you. This man, Edward Ciego, who, um, an English artist, he's no longer with us, but a uh, wonderful watercolorist, but it's not a watercolor I want to show you. It's one of his oil paintings here, this one, which is the walls of Marrakesh. Um, I, I, I think this, is fabulous in what he has left out, um, how he has created the, the ambiance, the, the, the high key um, heat uh, of, of this scene by leaving as much, uh, an awful lot out. There's, 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 not, there's virtually nothing in the sky. Um, he's, he's even done something really interesting here where we're all so often taught bring some, something red or something warm in, in, in the front of your picture to bring it forward. Well, he's done exactly the opposite. He's, he's got something cool, this blue thing here, but it acts as a focal point for the rest of the painting and works against the rest of the painting. So, um, if I can come now to this um, photograph, uh, that I took of the Bonjour Cafe uh, in where I live in Poundbury in Dorset. Um, and um, I'd just like to say one or two things about this in terms of my thinking of how to make this simple. Um, I, I, pl please remember, I've had some time to intellectualize this. Uh, quite often you, you see something and you sit down and you, you're doing this more or less on the spur of the moment. But what was on the spur of the moment was taking this photograph. Was uh, th This was taken in um, April, I think, the uh, first lot of sunshine we'd had. I don't think the cafe, had, which is just open for takeaways, had uh, been going that long, just opened up and people were delighted to get out 
into the open air again. And um, I, I, I saw this and thought, whoa, that's, that's wonderful. And took a photograph. That, that, if you like, is my 1% inspiration. <laughs> um, and um, I, I, I'd like to talk about some of the reasons why it's wonderful and then talk about some of the, reasons, some of the things I'm going to try and get rid of. And then we'll, we'll get on with, with the painting. Um, the the um, I, I think for me what probably caught it straight off was the light this this um, amazing light that's coming from the left across the whole of the side of this building and then works its way across the front of the building throwing the rest of it and the building is on a corner so there's three sides to this rather interesting shaped um building uh I, there is that that side of it here is um is all in shadow and and then these um people objects are in front of the building and they are catching the light that we spoke of here so we've got fantastic light amazing values the sort of lights and the darks and and this the, the deep darks in here setting up uh, against the lights and the, the the backdrop of cool shadow here, allowing the things in the foreground to come come forward. And uh, I, I think uh, that, uh, together with the way things are placed here, it's, it's almost the composition almost seemed to be uh, done for me here. The balance between these this group of people sitting at the table here on the left and no people sitting at this table here but this very powerful image of the sun catching the greenery uh, and that's set against the shadow so there's a really nice balance here there's a really nice balance as i said earlier of how things are in the foreground uh, lit, lit uh, with their values in the foreground against the cooler shaded uh, backdrop here the other thing that uh, came across me was this um, amazing potential for perspective here. Um, uh, how the two sides of the building go away from you, uh, creating all sorts of interesting perspective um, uh, aspects to this. Uh, uh, the color was the thing that, that caught me, this um, amazing color, this pink color of uh, the, the cafe itself. Uh, and then how subtle li little bits of colour played off against that, uh, the, uh, the, the subtlety of some of these flowers that are on sale here, uh, and, uh, and how uh, this, this blue table sort of reflects the blue on this guy's um, shirt here, and, and lots of other um, aspects uh, of the colour. And of course, you've got all the reflections uh, in the windows. And I think the last thing that uh, comes across here is there's a kind of story in this. Um, it's a sort, it's almost a narrative in that in the, I, I mentioned that this was at the end of the lockdown, people had just been allowed out, the cafe was open but only for takeaways, um, and, and you can see the people wearing quite a lot of clothing here, despite the strong sunlight, because we, we had great, we had very warm weather in April, but but it was quite cold. Um, uh, and, and you know, the, the, anything, you know, why is that table empty? Why is that full? Uh, um, wh where, where's the person selling you this stuff and so forth? Little bits of stories that can come into it. Right, so that, in a sense, having spent a few minutes talking about it was kind of the the one percent inspiration um now now how are we going to simplify it i mentioned two things here that i just want to home in on one is this mindset where uh, if you can think of you you reacting to this scene rather than you recording it I mean, after all, that's a pretty good record of the scene. So I'm trying to do something in this instance where I'm making a more personal record of the scene, the things that I've seen interesting. And um, the other thing I mentioned was this word focus. 
So I'm focusing in on what uh, I see important. Uh, I have to say that when I saw this, one of the first thoughts went through my head was, hey, that would make a great picture for one of our online sessions. Um, and, um, and, and kind of that might have tinged a little bit where I go from here. I, I've... I think the thing that I, the thing that I have probably uh, hidden more than anything else in this is the perspective um, that you have going back here um, and and everything that's going on around here. I've I've sort of taken a leaf out of Paul Hogarth's uh, illustrations, and this is a it, accordingly is a slightly illustrative sort of painting, I would say. And uh, I, I'm definitely interested in the light and the values. I'm definitely interested in uh, the colors. Uh, and I've got, I've got to get some of this pink in for the bonjour, uh, um, even if I don't put the rest of the building in. And I'm um, interested in the composition. In my drawing that I've got here, I have tried to take out the perspective mainly. I've tried to take out other things that maybe aren't necessarily adding to these things I've mentioned to you, the light, the values, the color, the composition. Um, and um, I've also just tinkered with it. I, I don't know what drawings you have done accordingly, um, and, and it doesn't matter whatever you, you want, uh, but this this is the drawing that I've done. I've I've taken one of the people out of here. I've sh shuffled one or two little things uh, around in here, but this this essentially is where I'm going to go with my uh, painting today. Now, having said that, I'm, I'm really hoping that everyone's managed to do a drawing of this uh, be because um, uh, a drawing like this, it takes longer really than we have got here. Actually, um, uh, there's a lot of this rubbed out as well. So a lot of the drawing doesn't show um, that, that in trying to get rid of things. Um, and and uh, sometimes that's no bad thing. You could draw it and then rub things out and so forth. So um, now before we begin this talking about the watercolor and begin our paintings, just uh, a, a word about the materials and equipment I'm using. Uh, the paper that I'm using here is a rag, a, a good quality watercolor rag, 100% rag content paper. It's actually Archer's and uh, it's 300 grams, so it's, it's quite, quite thick. Um, although I've got it taped down, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty thick uh, and heavy. Uh, and also this particular paper is uh, hot press. So it's, um, you, you've got these three, you've got hot press, uh, one extreme, which tends to be smooth. Uh, you've got rough at the other end, which is rough. And then in the middle, you've got something which is known as not or uh, NOT or cold press. So um, the last two or three demonstrations I've been using this because uh, um, uh, uh, um, hot pressed and, and uh, it, it doesn't matter what you're using, that's what I'm using. I've used a soft pencil to draw and I've drawn, I've actually drawn rather more heavily than I might normally draw so that uh, I'm, you, you can see what I've done. Um, and uh, my paints are all artist quality uh, watercolours. Um, wherever possible, I, I, I go for a transparent um, translucent paint, but they're not all uh, uh, pigment. They're not all that. Some are semi, um, uh, but but I will talk about these as I go through them. And Lois has sent you a, a drawing, uh, a photograph I've sent of this. And um, I've, I think these will probably be the three brushes I'll use today. So it's a it's a big mop, moppy brush. It's squirrel, holds lots of water, goes to a point. Um, uh, there's another squirrel hair brush here, which is another smaller mop. And then I've got a, a rigger here, which is just synthetic. And, um, uh, uh, and that's probably 
where I'm going to go with this. And then lastly, before we get going, um, as I have done pretty much all year, uh, I will split my demonstration down into four parts. Um, the first part being the drawing and the thinking about it, the composition. I've done that here. The second part is putting washes down, light colors. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then we go into the third, which, which is more colors and darker colors and shadows. And then the final one, which is any details that you want to put in. So um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everyone's done some kind of a drawing. Um, whether it looks like this or not doesn't really matter. Um, I, I, I've, um, I, I'm going to now put in um, some washes and um, I, I think I'll do that as simply as possible. Um, I noticed in Paul Hogarth, he, he uses a lot of white paper. He just focuses in on what he's interested, makes that painting that is a kind of why his work has got an illustrative quality, I would say. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to do the same here. So I anticipate that I'm not necessarily going to paint all the paper. I'm, I'm particularly the things I'm focusing in on here, I'll paint. So I want to put in, uh, I think right at the start, something of the warm light that we've spoken about here. And uh, I'll probably put in something of the most important color that I see, this pink here, yeah, and, um, and and may, maybe not much more than that as my um, wash stage. At the end of that, uh, I'll dry it completely before we move on. So here we go. Uh, water, big moppy brush. And um, uh, it's at this stage that if you want some parts of your picture to be the white of the paper, that try and avoid painting it. But um, I, I'm not sure necessarily that I need to worry too much about that. I don't see anything that, that has been. I mean, there are some sort of highlights here. And um, if, if I can manage to leave them, I will do so, but I, I can deal with them later on. I, what I want to do is get in some warmth. So I'm going to use this raw sienna, a little bit of this raw sienna, um, and put that over. The light comes across the whole scene, so I, I can pretty much take it across uh, much of what I see here. So let's just put uh, something down here uh, across these People, there's light on them that, that will all be useful later on. Um, uh, here, um, all right. And this is raw sienna I was using. It's quite light at the moment. Uh, there's, um, let's, let's put some of that down here. So I'll run it over the various things that are catching the light. Um, it, it's not critical, this, but um that you can always come back and work on things later on uh but uh, it is the light that uh we're interested in here and let's just see having made uh okay so there, there is this it's all pretty wet at the moment um Okay, I'm gonna put some of this pink in, right, pink, pink, pink. So the color that I'll use for that will be uh, some alizarin crimson here. Um, now, is that going to be, can I get my pink out of that if I want it? If I, if I keep it really light, maybe, maybe I can. Um, let's see, what's that gonna look like if I do? I do that. Let's see. I'll 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 pop it on and 
and if I need to do anything more to it uh, uh, whilst it's still wet, I'll do so. So we've got, uh, and I'm going to run it over where I think the pink will be useful, something like that. Um, I've kept it quite really light at the moment. Uh, Uh, I'll, I'll see how things look when, when I come back and I've dried it. Uh, th th these windows are going to be really dark, e except for some places where I've, I've got reflections of the sky in it and so forth. So I'm, I'm, I'm not fussed whether I, I overlap on that a little bit. Let's just see uh, where else. Um, a little bit of light coming into the room. Um, and do I want to, at this stage, put anything else in? Um, uh, what about, whilst things are still a bit wet, a bit of yellow here. Uh, we got flowers and so just, just it's, it's all a bit wet and it'll start working its way in a little bit. Um, I, I think really that's that's all that I'm going to do with my washes. So that's the whole of the second stage of the painting. is sort of completed very quickly. We've done one, two stages. You'd think we're halfway through it. We're, we're only about 30% pers perspiration the way through this one. I mean, one of the reasons why I talk about painting and lots of creative activities being uh, the 99 percent is because if you think about it it can take you a hell of a long time to learn these things i mean we're always learning the whole time and so we're we, we never seem to actually get there but learning to paint learning to to cook learning to sew or whatever it is 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 um is a, is a lot of hard work uh, was it someone said you need to do 10,000 hours or something of something before you've, you've, you've got anywhere? Well, it's a lot of hard work there anyway. Um, let me see. Anything else? Oh, yes, I know. I'll, I'll do one other thing. I'll, I'll just pick up some cerulean um, and put that there. That could well be something to do with the reflections of the sky later on. Yeah, that's... That's as far as I, I'll go with that just at the moment. Uh, so if, if you wish to add any other sort of wash colors, but uh, the, by all means do so. Primarily it's the light, uh, the, the light colors that I, I put on here that I thought uh, would be good in the, at the, this early stage in the wash. Um, uh, the details, the other colors, the the, the garments they're wearing, the flowers, um, uh, the, the wooden boxes and everything will all come mostly in the next stage. So everybody, I'm going to send this back to you. Um, if you've been working alongside me, that's absolutely great, but um, I, I'll give you time to catch up. We're, we've got, we're well in time. We're doing very well this session. Um, I wish you all good luck. And um, I'm going to get my hairdryer out in a moment to just dry this. So when we do move to the next stage, uh, this wants to be bone dry. Right, so uh, where shall we go? Um, I, I, I quite often when I do paintings, leave the figures um, right to the end. Um, I'm not sure why I do that. I, am I going to do that again this time? I, I, I don't think I will. I think I'll sort of march across left to right as I'm right-handed uh, on this, um, putting in um, the various bits of colour that I want to put in here. Um, I, I'm conscious that uh, if you look at the photograph, I, I've drawn up to this edge of the shadow. I've drawn up to where the, the building 
goes away at um, it's not quite a 90 degree angle, but it's something uh, up up there. Um, uh, so, and I'm aware that there is some shadow uh, reflected. Uh, there's some shadow in in the white around the pink here. So I'll just just bear that in mind. There are various bits of the this um, uh, detailing, architectural detailing, which catch the light. Not ma not many of them, just one or two bits, which might be quite useful to remember to bear that in mind. And there are some uh, the the whole of the uh, and down here there's some, isn't there? Uh, the whole of the this side of the building is in the shade that's that's the uh, because it's not facing the sun but there are some areas uh, like in here and in here where it's a little bit darker so i'll, I'll just bear that in mind um right let's begin i'm going to use this uh smaller mop brush um smaller than the one I had before, but it's still a squirrel brush and it still holds lots of water. Now, whether you uh, you work in this order or whatever, I, I am as much, well, I'm going to start off working left to right. We'll, we'll, we'll see uh, how it goes. Um, inevitably, I'll end up jogging. So I'm going to start off with uh, these figures. And um, first thing I'll do is maybe pick up a a bit of burnt sienna uh, and put down something for whatever skin is showing something here. Not a lot of skin because they're all wrapped up. Um, yeah, that will do for that. And um, and then uh, let's pick up some blue. I mentioned this fellow's shirt, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to put some cobalt in. Just pick up some cobalt a brush and um, put in some uh, some sort of patterns, striped, some sort of striped shirt he's got here. Um, and I, I have no idea what goes on underneath here, I think. Um, yeah, just that that will do. That's given him some some clothing and uh, uh, the lady here. Um, uh, she's, OK, I'm going to give her a, a, a green. A, a green jacket, coat, whatever. Uh, I, I think the reason I've chosen that is because of the green that's over here. I just thought it might an interesting balance and uh but we'll see so let's um let's I've, I've gone for this sap green which is my um convenience green let's just see uh let's just pop some other. and where um i might want it, the, the the light to be shining uh strongly i i, I might um not, not put any green at all just um under here there's not much light shining here just I've left little bits out. I've actually got a green, green coat of some kind. Um, and uh, I'm going to give her some red shoes because that kind of. plays off the red that's elsewhere in the picture. Maybe some red shoes there. They're all going to be in the shadow in sh shadow anyway uh, on that one. Um, uh, the, the table, um, I'll go to my burnt sienna. Uh, sort of make it a, it's a it's a dark brown table. I'll I'll um, I'll add some burnt sienna and just bring in something here with a table and uh, and similarly the, the chair that she's on 
These are quite light colours because um, in some places the light will catch them. And uh, I want that to work. Uh, so, so let's give her, uh, give her some. Okay. Now there's there's more that I'll I'll do to those figures later on. I I usually leave the figures out, but I can reckon uh, Paul Hogarth probably never did that, so he probably just went into it straight away. And uh, right, let's have a look at um, I uh, I think uh, th this table. So I, th I think what I'll do is I will. Um, I'll do the shadows, the light shadows uh, and everything uh, towards the end. So let's just bring in some color. So go back to my um, raw sienna. Let's put in, there's a, a bit of the table which shows here where the light's shining strongly on it. So I'll just um, leave, leave that, the, the first color that I put in here. Let's bring in, um, So this interesting table is here. Um, I'll pick up some burnt sienna and just make this as a box of some kind, just make that slightly different. So it's not all the same. Uh, here we got here, there's a, there's a terracotta um, pot back here, um, which I'll put in and, um, and then um, these baskets here uh, are probably, I'm going to use something like raw sienna again, but I'll, I'll make, I'll add a bit of brown to some uh, and, and just break them up a little bit. So I, I'm, I'm Again, I'm keeping I'm quite light at the moment here. Um, let's, let's add a little bit of um, burnt sienna to that and just let that give it a bit of patina. And I'll do the same with these other ones. Uh, this one here. And here, I'll add, I'll add some uh, burnt, burnt on, but they're just slightly different brown. So they're not too perfect. Just, right, we've got something going on there. Um, she's um, clearly wrapped up these flowers and little um, cones of some kind. So let's, um, let's do something. Where, wherever you can leave the light bits that we put in in the first stage uh, of the uh, painting, then that you know that's a good thing. We can come in, um, uh, and then whilst whilst we're here, let's do some of these flowers. Um, now, um, if, if, pick up some red, put some flowers in here, a uh, couple of red ones in here. Uh, add some greenery. I, I think I'll, I'll pick up the, a sap green, but I might add some, say, lemon yellow to it, just just to make it a bit lighter. And uh, I'm I'm tending just to push with the my brush here, which, if you can see, the, it makes it look like those of you who've been before. I've been talking about having a brush which has a bad haircut. Well, sometimes you can just make marks like that and you'll, you'll, you'll achieve more than you'll ever achieve by 
trying to paint it in exactly. Bad haircut, bad haircut brush. Um, so th this is um, a very cheap children's brush. Got lots of those here. My grandchildren use them. Uh, and I, I took a pair of scissors to that one and gave it a really bad haircut. But it's amazing how uh, th that's great for trees in the distance and things like that. So when you're using a, a paintbrush, it's it's not just the pointy bit at the end. It's you could break it up. You can use it on its side. There are all sorts of things. So now um, at this stage, whilst it's still uh, there's a little. Let's just put a bit of red in there. Um, it, whilst with the dabs of colours we've we've put in here uh, are still slightly wet. If if you wanted to, let's just make some stronger, a couple of stronger yellows here. Um, if if you wanted to, because paint watercolour always dries lighter than you think you, you know for instance with these reds i've got here i i could come in i might even add a crimson to it come in something much uh stronger just um and particularly if uh so, so you you've got a variety of light reds and dark reds playing themselves off to each other there so uh let's call that a day for the moment um and uh, now I'm going to go across to, to this um, area here. Uh, right, well, I will do the same again. I'm going to pick up some um, sap green, convenience green, because it's, it's there, it's always the same. But I've, I find more often than not, I, I use it and I mix something with it. So I'm going to mix some uh, lemon yellow with that. and. I was just thinking that in the photograph, this really stands out because it's um, it's against the dark background and I'm not putting a dark background in there. So I, I still want it to stand out. Let's just see if, um, if, if, I, if I now um, get a darker green. So go back to my sap green and add a bit of something like ultramarine to it, ultramarine blue. And 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 quite not not a lot of water. Let's just see what happens. And and just put that in there. And that sort of blends a little bit into it. We can come back if we need to, yeah, something like that. We can come back if we want to and add uh, um, some more to it later on if um, in our final stage. Right, let's um, move on. Uh, this chair underneath it, so uh, I'll, I'll just go back to my raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna maybe, make that a bit uh, too much maybe, just um, A lot of this is going to have shadow over it, so I just can make that too too dark. All right, so that's okay for that. And um, uh, this table. Oh, I mentioned this table in conjunction with this fella's shirt, didn't I? So let's go back to. I use cobalt for that, so maybe. Uh, well, maybe maybe make it a little more turquoise. Either bring a drop of turquoise in, or um, if you want to mix it, maybe a bit of lemon yellow. Let's just see. Does that make it slightly turquoisey? And it's all the same color. Very convenient. This chair. 
uh, I've been going backwards and forwards this raw sienna quite a bit, haven't I? So um, the light catches little bits of the top of the chair, so I, I could even just um, paint it so that maybe some bits of the paper um, show through. Right. Um, okay. I think the last thing I'll do is is put some shadow um, on this, and um, and, and then we'll uh, dry it up and go for the next stage. But although this isn't the end of one of the stages, I I just thought I'd wait a little bit here, um, and and give you a chance to catch up. The, the next, my next stage is going to be put some shadow in here, trying to catch some of the light that's clipping bits of this um, front frontage to the uh, uh, cafe that I spoke about earlier, uh, and um, and then bring some of the light that's uh, the shadows that's on on the people, on the um, furniture and so forth, and I think really importantly that that the shadows that are cast by all this lot because they i i didn't mention this when i was talking about it but i i think that that's really quite a a, a useful thing in this how the shadows connect everything together yeah i should have mentioned that i think that's quite an important part of the composition how these shadows come across here and, and seem to connect everything together but i'm going to do that in a moment um, I'm just going to um, let you catch up a little bit. Okay, Lois? I'm here, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, um, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move on. We're, we're doing really well time-wise. I'll move on um, in, in a few minutes um, and, and then put the shadows in to bring us to the end of this stage. Yeah. Okay, good. When you think about it, so the way the way Paul um, Hogarth would have been drawing uh, in the Mediterranean, probably in the sketch, but I don't know. I really don't know. He might have had sheets of paper. Um, and he he would have done this instinctively, intuitively. He would have just worked across it all and um, um, and not not maybe not consciously broken the thing into stages he just just sweep across his illustration very quickly um, but in in trying trying to intellectualize roughly how he might have worked um, uh, I, I think we can learn a lot learn someone's a lot asking that. what blue you used for the table please Mike well, well I I was talking about it being slightly turquoisey. Uh, so I do have a turquoise here, but I didn't want to use that. So I, I picked up a bit of cobalt and added some lemon yellow to it, just to give it that green, just to make it a bit different from this fella's um, shirt here. Um, yeah, that's what I did. Um, Okay. One of the good things about not doing these sides here is you don't have to do the word bonjour twice. <laughs> I even got the simple word like bonjour wrong on my letter, I realized I could, when I did the strap line at the top of the email, I called it Bonour, Bonour Cafe. <laughs> Which we all know means what, Lois? I've no idea what Bonour means. <laughs> Me being daft. <laughs> okay. 
I think this is all going to be dry enough. Let's just give it a whiz with the hair dry. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that I have drawn this maybe a little heavier than I, I might normally draw it. Um, but I, and the reason for that was so that I, I wanted it to show up on screen like this. Uh, but, but it's with a soft pencil. I, I tend to use uh, a 4B uh, or anything soft like that. And, uh, and, and uh, of course, if you don't want the lines there later on, you, you can rub them off. Although if you think, if you look at Paul Hogarth's work, let me show you a picture. A lot of his um, paintings have all the, the, the pencil marks left in. Here we are, this is a good one. Look at that. I mean, he's put a block of shadow there and one or two bits of shadow here, but what, what gives you all the uh, information about the uh, stonework is, is the, the pencil marks he's left there. So, um, is it a, I think I'll move on, Lois, shall I? I think so. Here we go. Anyone want to scream out that you don't want me to move on? Um, but I will do. Right. Um, having put in quite a lot of colour here, um, I haven't done anything about these dark areas uh, in, inside the building uh, here yet. Uh, uh, that, that, that will follow in a moment. But having done these, um, uh, put in the, the extra colours and things that we spoke about right at the start. I'm now going to uh, unify it a little bit by uh, bringing some shadow onto it. Now, in some places, the shadow is, is a, a, a lot heavier, you know, for instance, under here, uh, than it is um, in... Um, say for instance on the face of the front of the cafe so uh, I, i'm going to mix up a color which i'll keep pretty much the same but um i, I some of it will be stronger than other colors now i I'm, again if you look at oh let's get this man out again I, I don't know if he does do this but if you look at um some of his shadows they he varies the shadows enormously uh, from browns to greens i'm just trying to find examples here uh, to grays um i'm trying to find an example of it no i can't i i'm um i i often use as a go-to shadow a, a french ultramarine blue and a burnt sienna but I'm not going to do that here because I think that's going to be too heavy. And, and um, one of the things that inspired me, that 1% right at the start, uh, was um, the, the colour, the play of colours. And, and uh, I, I liked the, 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 the cool light grayness of the background and this all coming forward. But I, I, I really don't want to make the shadows too heavy on... Uh, on the pink here, but I do want them to be stronger in other areas. So um, let's just see. I, I I'm you know, wait a moment. Let's just see how this works before uh, I'm going to use uh, the red that I use, uh, although I use it very lightly for the pink of um, uh, the Bonjour Cafe. I'm going to use that, and I'm going to mix it with some. Cobalt blue. Ooh, it's kind of sort of mauve. Yeah, I, I, I'm quite happy with it being a sort of mauve, but um, I, I just like to tone that down a little bit. So I put a red in and I put a blue in. 
And if you put the other primary color in, you, you, you tend to gray things down. So the other one, let's say, let's put a little bit of um, raw sienna in. Okay, I think I'll add a bit more blue. A bit more blue still. A bit more raw sienna. So I'm, I'm moving backwards and forwards and getting to something uh, yeah, something a bit like that. Now, um, I'll, I'll use that quite lightly here. I can always come in and um, make it stronger, but I may well find myself having to quickly go back to the cobalt, go back to the crimson, and go back to the raw sienna just to mix those two together here. So let's see how that goes. Now, when, when I'm I, I, actually, I'll make myself a slightly bigger quantity of that just to give myself a fighting chance. So put more water in, put more blue. That's going, in danger of going too blue now. So let's add a little bit of red to that. And a little bit more raw sienna. Let's just see. I wonder what that's gonna look like. Okay, that's good. That's good for the light, I think of it uh, that's um i might need to go a bit darker so i'm um i'm gonna i'm gonna work down this way from the cafe and uh let me get my photograph out so i can just try and okay i've got little bits of um so if i do yeah that's probably gonna be it's gonna dry a little bit lighter in it so if i do that and maybe try and leave the little bit of um little bits of the light uh, so down here take that down yeah that can come pretty much all the way down here can't it around these objects And uh, I'll, I'll also um, may, maybe add a bit of water to that, take that down. Uh, you know, I, I was talking about there being a shadow down this side of just here. So I'll take that, I'm trying to leaving, leaving a gap um, here. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and then bring in some, uh, shadow along here. What have I got here? I've got a bit of... Okay, so you're just trying to, if you don't manage it, don't worry about it, but trying to leave some of, some of the pink showing through as the light areas, which will be quite useful uh, to, to show that the features are 3D and also it'll just help you a little bit with the the color of the actual building. So let's put a bit there. Something like that. And then take that down. Uh, there are little bits of light catching some of these flowers up here. Um, I'll, I'll try and leave those if I can. If if not, um, I'll add some of that later with with some white paint. So let's take that up here. Um, and, uh, I've just added a bit of water to it here and bring that down down there and and, uh, and along here as well. There is um quite there's almost a sort of splashback glow here to can you see where the light's bouncing off that top feature? So what I might do is just do something like that. Uh, so it's still a little bit um a little bit of light splashback there. And I'm gonna take
So I'm, I'm putting the shadow in on all the, the pinky bits of the Bonjour Café. There are some bits that I would like to be a little darker and I'll deal with those in a moment. Here we go. Yeah. And um, some of those little darker bits. I, what I'll do is, um, I might as well do it now, I'll just, Take, take a bit of the paint off, add a bit more blue, touch of red, just making it a little bit stronger, maybe a bit more blue, a little bit stronger. And let's just see if um, I can't put something in uh, here. Just um, some little accents, maybe something underneath here. What else might I need to do it? Okay, I hope that's all making itself clear. Right, anything else on the actual building itself? I think um, right, uh, using this shadow color that I've been playing around with. Um, let's, um, it, I, I'm gonna put some shadow in here. If you want the, now that we're working on dry paint, if you want um, it, the shadow to be a bit softer, you can always just touch it with your finger or with a uh, um, bit of tissue, maybe even damp tissue, uh, or drop a bit of water in. But so, so where, where I want the, if, if, if I want it to be, I, I don't think I do want it to be, so I'm going to put some shadow just there to suggest that guy underneath will, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do under there, but I'll, I'll do something there. Let's just have a look at her ladyship. Um, little bit of shadow there and um, goes around the back of her head. There, there's some darker bits underneath where she's sitting, but I can I can deal with those when I come back uh, with with the next stage in certain detail. Let's just see if I want to um, and uh, the table, how should we treat the table? Certainly some of it's in shadow. Um, I'll, I'll put some in, but I'll come in with darker bits later on. So if I leave some bits looking as if the light might be touching them, a little bit there. Um, not quite sure what's happening on her chair, but uh, it's just, I, I, I'm going to bring the shadows across in, in a moment, but um, uh, yeah, let's, let's do that now, actually. Um, so I'm going to need to mix up more shadow. Cobalt blue I was using. A bit of alizarin crimson, that gives me a, a sort of mauve. Add a bit of uh, yellow in the form of raw sienna, which um, 
graze it down a bit, a bit more blue. Let's just see if um, that's a little bit. It's a little bit darker at the moment here, so I'm going to pop some of that in here, uh, and that. Uh, the shadows are coming across here, aren't they? So let's just take these. I'll, I'll take them as far as the table anyway. Take these to the table. Um, the table casts the shadow. These come up to here. Okay, uh, let's have a look at this table itself. Uh, shadows on the table, a bit under here. So this um, a mop squirrel brush um, uh, is, um, it is really very good for doing detailed work. I mean, I, I do have this uh, rigger, which I use a lot for detail work, but because this goes to a nice, uh, a really good point, um, then it's great. So we've got underneath the table is, is pretty much in shadow. Um, let's, um, it, it's got these sort of ball things that the table moves on. So uh, there's a variety of shadows under the table, but I'll, I can come back uh, to those um, when I bring in more details. So um, let's just the point is that the table is pretty much under shadow, isn't it? Um, and um, these are being cast. Yeah, I don't do want to make them darker. I, I can make them darker later on. Let's, let's just see if that, that might do the job. Okay. And um, so I'm going to leave this area, uh, the, the, the windows and, and everything, maybe to the end and, and, and do that um, at the end of this. So I'm, I'm carrying on with uh, my shadows here. So uh, uh, using the same uh, shadow uh, color, just uh, from time to time, I've, I've either um, lightened the shadow with a bit of water or darkened it in a bit. Um, and I, I've also got the option of coming back um, in a moment, just, just put that into shadow there. I've got the option of coming back in a moment and uh, adding one or two little uh, details. So what's happening up here with uh, these cones that she's made so nicely. Um, add some little bits of shadow around here, okay. Uh, th these are going to stand out a bit more when, when they've got the darkness behind them, but uh, let's um, the, because they're cone shaped, these um, flower uh, um, things she's made to sell her flowers in, they, they wrap around a little bit. So let's just uh, put, hopefully that the colors that we put in in that last stage will we'll be uh, coming through uh, at this stage. We will be making use of, of them, depending on how much color you put in there. So uh, similarly, the side of the orange boxes are, are in shadow, aren't they? Uh, and, and again, down here. A little bit of shadow, just to show that the box has got some 
slightly off the ground. We will come back to these shadows just to give them a little more punchiness um, on our last stage, but we're, uh, th this is fine for the moment. I'm in need of some more shadow color. Back to my cobalt uh, blue. I was using alizarin with that. I don't want to be too strongly um, uh, mauve, but um, I, I want it to have some of that in it. So let's have a look. And, and also they're, they're quite strong, the colors I'm using here. Is that going to be any, yeah, it's going to be all right. And let's, um, let's have a look at the chair. So what, what's the chair doing? It's, there's some of, some of it is in shadow like this bit at the back and some of it just catches the light yeah like that let's see if that works uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll throw a cast shadow across here actually so that's going to be something like Okay, something like put the shadow under the table, put the shadow um, from the chair, the shadow that's been thrown by the orange box on the ground. And shadows, when they disappear, uh, when they go off in the distance, often are. Um, lighter, but I, I, I won't worry about that too much at the moment. Um, it's just, well, if you, if you wanted to make, you know, for instance, this one lighter here, just dab it, just dab it down a little bit like that and let it sort itself out. Right, now on to, on to, um, let's, let's, um, it's some kind of a, a vessel that goes, no, no, it, it curves around. You, you know, I was talking about having a softness to it. Maybe, maybe we could get that just by touching it with a finger, or maybe with, uh, or maybe a little bit of water, or just some, something that's going to soften the edge of it a bit. Um, you think you mix up enough color and then it's gone but it doesn't matter it just no harm in having lots of variations of the color a uh, little bit of cobalt blue I used I used some raw sienna and yeah okay let's just uh, put some of this in there Right, um, and then something on this um, this chair. Remember, I left little bits of white out on this, hoping to possibly catch some of the light on the chair. Take that down here. The back of the chair is mostly a lot of it in, in shadow. Um, And then we've got some cast shadows from that. Goes off the picture.
And I was talking about linking the shadows, the shadows linking everything together. That, that's often quite useful. Um, right. Um, do I want to put anything else in now before I, I, I call this stage finished? Uh, I think. Um, when you look into the into the cafe here, you've got some light uh, coming on the, the the surface of the floor. I, I think I'll that that's just still the first original um, wash I put down. So I'll just just put some of that in there and. Um, To finish this off, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some sort of statement about the darkness that is um, inside the building. And um, let's see the way I'll do that. Um, I think what I'll do is um, I'll pick up some burnt sienna, start off with that, I'll just mix it into my um, shadow colour there and um, I, I, I do have the lights catching some of these um, flowers so maybe if, if I just draw a few marks and, and try and try if I can to avoid. Um, yeah, see if I can try and avoid painting on it. It doesn't matter if I, if I don't. Just got one or two things like that. Okay, so I, and I've got this um, sort of brown color here. Let's see where we go with that to start off with. Uh, so I'm going to take that up. I'll make it a bit stronger burnt sienna I was using just mixing it in with can I put my hands on this is this dry enough yet let's see how it goes um because I've, I've come back up the picture now so if, if we now <clears throat> this this is uh, an interesting thing to paint because when you're looking into a building the first thing uh, when you first see it and you snap your finger, it's all completely dark because your eyes haven't got used to it. But then if you spend a bit longer looking, you'll see, begin to see some details that are going on there. So I'm trying to get somewhere between the two. So what I'm going to do is uh, put some of this, oh, I was going to leave something here for, let's just leave that. For the highlights if possible a couple of highlights on the um on a bit of metal so I've, so I, I'm painting this in here and, and I'm deliberately just leaving some gaps now it's not because they are white gaps there so because when I come in and put something dark over it later on and paint it they they will then start to look different from, from the dark I put on. So uh, let's put some of this in. Okay, now when I'm painting, if I can leave one or two little, uh, one or two little bits of paper showing, then that might help with uh, these flowers, which are catching the light. Okay. So I'm still using this brown, no reason why not. Um, Let's take that down around some of this this stuff here, which I haven't painted at all yet, have I? Um, now, so that it's not all still the same, I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and drop that in, pure blue, just drop that in in one or two areas. 
I'm going to end up with this darkness that I spoke about that you, you, you first see, but I, I just want there to be something more than just, uh, just blackness there. So let's, um, let's do that and move on up to up here. Uh, the light is glinting on this metal structure. I'll, I'll try and keep some of it, but if I don't, we, we can deal with that later on. So, um, I'm moving across here to where there are some reflections of the um, sky. So let's just um, bring in some, maybe some other little colors here. Um, I brought in some raw, raw sienna that you know, could be something to do with the, uh, the building that's opposite. I, I really don't want to get complicated in this, but so let, let's um, add a bit of blue to what we've got going on here and make some of this a bit darker. And kind of, um, speckle it as well. You see, I was talking about using this bad hairbrush brush, wasn't I, earlier? So just as long as you've got the edges in, just a bit of speckling. We're coming back to work on this in a moment. Okay, so that that hopefully at some stage will tell us something about there maybe being some um, sky reflected. Let's take it on this side as well. And uh, uh, just, just soften some of that and put some of that in here. In fact, it would be quite good because a lot of these flowers that we see will, will be light. That will be light against the dark and this will be a, a little bit dark against the light. Um, a bit more maybe. Um, and inside, so I've, I've kind of fairly subtly varied um, the browns to, to the blues and things, but inside I'm going to go back to my burnt sienna and see where that takes me. So let's just... Uh, now, as you look, you see fridges and you see all sorts of things in there. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get involved in that sort of detail, but, but I do want there to be something of interest. So. Um, Uh, let's bring in some browns down here. Um, when the, when you bring, you know, we spoke earlier about the light catching the top of that table. Well, this is your opportunity to try and suggest it by drawing a straight line there. See what I mean? Kind of doesn't matter what you do too much because we're going to come back and react to what we've got here. Let's take that underneath here a little bit. Um, add a bit of Round to that and um... right, what do we do here? Um... as if there's some sort of light streaming in. 
maybe to the bottom of the shop. I'd have just gone back over and um, I've created a sort of shape there. We talked about a fridge. Well, that's going to be kind of my fridge, but uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. But uh, so I've left it. I've left it um, white here because I, I will go back over it with a dark color, and this will become dark, and this this will become darker. But um, let's just see how this works for the time being. Anyway. I think that's that's me done for this stage of the painting. That's me done now. I said it was quite a long process. That's me done with bringing all the colors in, the shadows in, and making as uh, doing as much as I think I want to do before I come in and do the details, which will include the word cafe. Okay. Um, right, I'm moving on, uh, everyone, with this. and. Uh, this is the last stage of the painting. I'm going to bring in whatever details, um, uh, accents, or whatever you want to call them, th th that I think I need to uh, pull the painting together. I'll probably be using my rigor uh, a, a bit more than uh, I have. Well, I haven't used it at all. So where to begin? All right, I'm going to begin with the, the word cafe, because that's up the top. and. Um, and, and then kind of move down and across uh, and, and see if we can tie this up. We're coming up for two hours, Lewis. So uh, I'm just conscious of that. We're all right. So the, the, uh, it is in fact black, painted black. Um, I don't have a black in my uh, pigment here. The, I've, I've got a neutral tint, which is this one, um, which is, um, uh, I, I very rarely use it just on its own. I often mix it with things, but it, it's it's um, pretty translucent sort of color. It uh, it's it's really very helpful color if with any color you've got if you want to darken it a, a little bit of ne neutral tint. It's better than I think than Payne's Gray, which is um, something I've used for an awful lot. Only because uh, Payne's Gray is more opaque and this is more translucent. So. If I, I've just, uh, I, I tell you, I'm going to use it uh, uh, straight off here. Now, when you're doing this sign writing, oh, it's a bit tricky, really. I've, I drew it up, uh, so I'm just going to go over what I've done here. Um, I, I think as much as possible, if you can get the thickness of the letter forms roughly the same, then that, that's probably the tidiest way you can make it look. I'm using my rigor brush here. Um, and uh, and let's just hope for the best. So it's a bit too wet. Sign writing was never my forte, so we'll just go around here. Uh, aren't you grateful we didn't put the bonjour in twice? Um, So I'm, I'm just trying to, to keep the thickness of the letter forms um, as even as possible. So, that, and, and we come on down here. You wouldn't think that when I was a graphic designer, the days before computers, we used to do hand lettering. I hated it. I don't know if my sister. Oh, I, I know Annie's here. She said something. Well, she she um she she does calligraphy, so she's got really nice writing. So. No doubt she'll be sending me a picture of hers just to show me up. Cafe. 
actually we want an F there. Oops, getting a bit thick that. Actually, Sue and I are going to the Bonjour Cafe tonight to um, to get a, as a, a visiting furnace comes along and they, they do um, ribeye or something like that. We realised this morning we're completely out of food. So, cafe. And I have used um, my neutral tint for that. I, you could use Payne's Grave um, or you can mix up something dark, but I, I think it's it's uh, it's good and black here. So um, uh, let's see if I um, uh, at the top of the where's my photograph at the top of the um, this is uh, some sort of a little lead hut on here, isn't it? A little lead something. It's just uh, yeah. So something a bit darker there. And um, similarly there. Now, do I want to add any little accents under here? Um, do I? Yes, I will. So I'm, I'm actually going to go back to my shadow color, cobalt blue, a little bit of alizarin red, a little bit of raw sienna. Oh, a bit more blue, it's gone too brown. Okay, something like that. Now, I don't know if that's going to be too dark. Let's just, um, let's just put a touch under here, see. Just something under there might just give that a little bit of um, three-dimensional feeling. Just something under there, maybe. And, um, oh, yes, in the photograph, they've got some dark letting that in there. Well, I, well, I'm going back to my, switch back to my neutral tint. Let's just put something along here then. Where's it? So they catch the light, it does a little bit. So let's just, Something there. Okay. Um, if you want to put any little accents in, I don't know. Here. Um, Make this a bit darker under here. Right. Um, anything else? A little bit on the back of here, maybe. So I'm 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 just traveling around and adding one or two little bits, which will hopefully just bring out the uh, framework of uh, uh, the, the, um, these pediments and, and so forth they've got, they've got in the, um, the, the front of the building. A uh, little touch there, maybe. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to this window here. So I've come back to my a small mop brush and um, I'm going in with some dark colours here. So let's start off with burnt sienna. I'm, I'm just using the reservoir of colours that I've got mixed them together and seeing 
I want something a bit darker than that. So I've got the burnt sienna. I've, I've got some ultramarine blue. Uh, and if, if I want to, I can just drop some neutral tint in that. So let's just uh, take it over here. I'm going to go over pretty much all that I did before. And I left little um, little gaps of white. And when when this dries, you you you'll you'll see this not exactly completely flat there. I've just left a little mark there. Let's move across onto here. Uh, same dark color. I think I left a little gap there for maybe something to suggest there was a, a highlight on. the metal frame. Let's uh, you can make this as dark as you like. I think I think what we do need to do is do need to make a, a really quite strong statement uh, about this being dark. I talked about the values at the start and how I felt that the, the light and the values in the so I'm, I'm trying to bring, make a strong statement. And if I wanted to make that a little bit darker, I could just pick up some neutral tint and maybe drop a little bit in there. Let's do that with that. Um, I, I'm trying to avoid just having any black in this, but um, making some interesting dark sludgy sort of colors. Let's, uh, let's, Let's take that over here. Um, we've gone a little bit bluer over here, haven't I? Uh, so let's just see if we can stay with that. And this is where we, we tried to get something of the sky reflected. So maybe, maybe that's as much as we need to do there. U using. Uh, using what we've got there, not not covering up completely everything we've got there. So so I'll take that on. And so I'm I'm dodging around my palette here. I've just picked up something a bit more blue. Let's just see if we can if you can avoid when you're watercolor painting just painting over completely what you've just done. You you want to what you've done before to help you re uh, make the painting work for you. So a little bit there has left some of what's going on before. Let's move back over this side. Um, this is where we've got various light bits. The flowers, what are we doing? Oh, two and a half hours maybe. Um, I haven't done anything about these. I'll, I'll just pop some colors on there. I'll just see what colors I think be. I think I, I like the idea of there being a bright yellow there somewhere. So um, here, uh, I'm gonna bring in some neutral tint there to make that bit much darker, just there. Maybe down here, much darker, okay. Uh, and now, now across to this area here. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm using this well of uh, sludgy colors quite a lot and just digging in and hoping I get something which is appropriate. So I've used uh, burnt sienna in here. Let's just see if we can take that much of that. Okay, and um, I'll pick up some neutral tint and just make this top area here really quite dark. I've talked about this sort of notional fridge here, a suggestion that there is some um, something in there. It's got a shape of some kind or other. Yep, 
and then I'm going to go underneath here. Let's, um, let's play around with this, these shadows. So that there's some suggestion that there's light flooding into the bottom of the cafe. Underneath the bench, I'm just going to put a little bit of darkness down there. So this is the bit that's underneath the overhang of the table. And if you want to soften that, maybe just use your fingers. There we are, We're working well with that at the moment. Just um, let's have a look at these people here. Just uh, do I need to put one or two little accents here? Uh, give her some, something like that. I said it was going to be darker under the table. We've almost, almost lost um, any idea of quite what's going on there. So yeah, maybe that's enough there. And um, right, I'm back to my rigor. So uh, I'm hoping you're doing this, you're sort of working your way around and touching in little bits here. So let's have a little bit of some accents of some deeper shadows. Yeah. So this is very much just accents and um, one or two little details, which hopefully just give a little bit more life to what, what we've put down already. Let's, um, tiny little line, darker line there. Um, now we're getting there. I've just got to put the, the cage thing and some flowers and um, uh, the light and dark. Let's have a look at this um, pot we've got here. Let's just see a little bit of extra. Um, Oh, what bit stuff? Okay. Uh, anything on this chair? I'll make one or two bits a bit darker. Just make this a bit darker. Put back here, a bit of an accent there. I think we're getting close to that. Um, I'm going to add a bit more darkness here. So I'll, I'll pick, pick up my burnt umber. Uh, no, I'm trying, the raw um, burnt sienna, a bit of um, neutral tint, and let's just 
just add a bit more drama to what's going on in there. Right, um, let's have a splash of colour here, shall we? And um, another little splash of colour here. I should have done these before, maybe. And um, some shadow that's going on around these. Okay, we're sort of getting right. Um, I, I oh, what I'm going to hear. So, so I think I'll um, I'll, I'll mix up a. a I'll, I'll go to my green, my my. Um, yeah, not complimentary. What I, what I call it the uh, easy to get to green, um, and and just I don't know what else. Just put one or two. And, and and now I I'll add some. Um, go to my maybe I'll use almost pure neutral tint, and put in a couple of lines here. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to just use pure neutral tint down here. When you're doing sort of lines like this, uh, it, it's a good idea just to sort of do a lost and found thing and not necessarily, whoops, I've splodged that one, and not necessarily just one sort of tram lines or straight lines, uh, uh, continuous lines. Okay. Right, we've got some suggestion of an archway going there and um, just, some, I talked about some of these things being dark against the light. And um, I, th I think I've got to that stage where I'll just abandon it now. Um, go and have a cup of tea. You may come back and, and add a, a little bit to it if you want. Um, let's just put a bit there, a bit there. and make that a bit darker. That's it, I think. Leave it alone. Right, and that is the Bonjour Café, in all its inspiration and uh, um, excitement, um, simplified to, which was still a pretty uh, hefty painting, I, I think you might add, but simplified down by focusing on what you felt or I felt in this case, was important, the light, the values, the color playing off each other here and the composition um, and hiding the bits that I thought were going to make it, um, a, a, that weren't necessary, that weren't actually necessarily helping this particular response. And that was largely to do with all the buildings that are going around here perspective and everything like that because I felt that I could tell the story about the Bonjour Café um, uh, with um, uh, this relative simplicity um, I didn't so so I very much reacted to to that in doing this and and uh, I do hope that uh, that's been helpful and um, you obviously have your own styles of painting, of course, but just the idea of uh, it's. Um, I, I mentioned two things. I, I mentioned the mindset of being aware that 
uh, your painting is a reaction as opposed to a record. Uh, and I suppose in conclusion, I would say you don't have to put everything in.